And the next verse is Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqeen. Guide us onto the right path. Allahu Akbar. This is my favorite verse of all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who can guide man onto the straight path. Wallahi, nobody can guide man onto the straight path except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we can see that in the incident or through the stories of the Prophet alayhi salam. The Prophet Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. He was a very pious man and a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But his wife was not a righteous woman and he couldn't guide her onto the right path. We have the case of other prophets in which their children were not righteous and pious people and they could not guide them onto the straight path. It is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that guide man onto the straight path and he guide whoever him who he wish and misled or misguide whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wish. That is why it is said, Man Anybody who Allah guide is the most guided and nobody can misguide him. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misguided, Wallahi, nobody can guide him onto the straight path except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, if you're praying, you better pray for guidance for your children because you cannot guide them onto the straight path. No matter how close, no matter how engaged you think you are, no matter the kind of work you think you are working on them, Wallah, it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can guide them onto the straight path, not you. The next verse is read. Sirat al an amta alayhim Part of those whom you have mercy on them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should guide us onto the part of those whom he have mercy on them. And who are those? They are the prophets and the salihul mu'minun, which is the righteous people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to guide us onto the straight path. Sirat al and amta alayhim. Part of those whom he have mercy on them. The prophets, the Sahaba, which are the companions, which in another chapter, in another verse in the glorious Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Radiallahu anhum wa an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them. Allahu Akbar. May Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with whatever we do in His sake. And may Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us our sins. The next verse is read. Okay, this is the continuation of the previous verse. Sirat al ladina an amta alayhim ghayr al maqbubi alayhim wa nadalin. And not of those whom end your anger, and not of those whom go astray. And compound the uh, scholars of Islam has classified this into two. The first one are the Christians. Sarat al ladina and amta ali ghayr al maqdubi alayhim, and not of those whom end your anger, wal adali, and not of those whom go astray. Who are those that end the anger of Allah subhanahu wa taala? They are the Christians who claim that Allah subhanahu wa taala has a son. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already described himself in Surah Al-Ahad which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Qul huwa Allahu Ahad Say he is Allah the one Allah samad Allah the eternal absolute Lam yalid wa lam yulad He neither begets nor he is begotten Allah neither begets nor he is begotten So the concept of the Christians which they do claim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a son is totally a false clarification or a false statement by them may Almighty Allah continue to guide us I mean and what about lean are the Jews who know the truth but hide the truth 
as we know that there is a verse in the glorious Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that